What's up guys, welcome back to A to Z Geek. My name is Nick, and firstly I want to apologize for not uploading a video yesterday. As you know, it was Christmas, things were crazy, and I didn't get an opportunity. But hopefully with today's video, I'll make up for that. Because today, I'm going to show you how to hack the Wii. What's up dudes, and welcome to my desktop. Uh, we're going to go ahead and do this first part on my Mac. Uh, I would recommend doing the second part on a PC because that's going to make it uh, a lot easier. Uh, however, um, you probably can do everything on a Mac. Um, it just might be, uh, it just might require a little bit of uh, work around. Um, but for the sake of simplicity, we're going to go ahead and do this part on a Mac and the next part on a PC. So. Uh, the first thing you need to have is you need to have an SD card, a non-SDHC works better. Um, some people say that the XDHCs uh, work as well. However, it is recommended that you use a non-SDHC, uh, meaning if you pull your card up and you look at it and it says SDHC on the front of it, it may or may not work. Uh, my recommendation would just be if you if all you've got is the SDHC card, just go ahead and put it in the computer and and load it up on your Wii and do follow the steps along with me. And if it works, fantastic. If it doesn't, uh, go ahead and uh, make a trip to uh, Radio Shack or order something on eBay. The non SDHC cards are extremely cheap. Uh, two gigs minimum is recommended. I wouldn't go anything above two gigs. Uh, it's not necessary. None of the applications you need to load on the Wii are that big. Um, I have myself a one gig and it works perfectly. Um, and remember that this SD card will need to remain in your Wii. So you cannot use this SD card for this modding purpose and then repurpose it for something else. It has to be in the Wii when you use it for uh, playing your backups. So. First thing we need to do is we need to uh, go to a website called Letterbomb. But before we get started on that, I just want to give a shout out and give credit to where credit is due. Um, I am basing my entire video today off of a the complete soft mod guide, which was provided by the user Mob Mob Clutch, which you'll find right here. Um, he, uh, he, he, I don't, I'm not sure if he authored it or if he just provided it to the guys on Reddit, but, uh, it's a fantastic guide. And if you're partial to reading, um, instead of watching this video, I recommend you go check that guide out instead. Um, everything will be covered exactly as it is in the guide in this video. Uh, however, as I said, if you prefer to read it, I would go to this guide and check it out. Um, I will put the links to this guide in the description. <laughs> So, uh, first thing we need to do is we need to go to Letterbomb. Uh, the, the website for that is please.hackme.com. Uh, please.hackme.com. I'll put the, uh, the, the, the address for that in the description as well. So, um, now what we need to do is we need to determine what your MAC address is and what system menu version you're on. As you can see here, system menu version. Um, I would say about 99% of you are probably going to be on 4.3U, which stands for 4.3 US. Um, and then obviously there are other ones, Europe, Japan, and so forth. Uh, like I said before, 99% of you are gonna be on 4.3U, mostly because I'm speaking English and you're probably American and you're probably watching this in the United States. So, um, so next thing we need to do is find your Mac address. So I will go to my Wii and I will see you there and I will teach you how to find your Mac address. All right, guys. So here we are on the Wii. Uh, first thing we're going to do is we're going to try and find your Mac. No, we'll not try. We're going to, we're going to find your Mac address. So what you're going to need to do is go into your Wii options. And then you're gonna go into your Wii settings. And if you haven't done so already, now would be a really good time to connect to the internet. Uh, it's highly recommend that you do this soft mod on the internet so that you get the most up-to-date everything. Um, you can do it offline, but this guide is not going to show you how to do that. Um, so you need to go to, um, click the little uh, t uh, right arrow, and then click on internet. And once you're on internet, click on console 
information. And the console information will give you the MAC address right here. And uh, go ahead and write that down so that uh, on the next step, we can uh, enter it into our letter bomb. And that's it. I'll see you back on the computer. All right, guys, so here we are back on the computer. Now that we've found our MAC address, we're going to go back to that previous site that we were at before. That is please.hackme.com. should look just like this, um, also known as Letterbomb. Uh, I've also shown you how to find your system menu version, so you should now know which version you're on. Um, like I said before, 99% of you, 4.3 U. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and enter that MAC address in here. Mine is already in entered, which is why the black bar is here. Um, and then we're going to go ahead and make sure that bundle the HackMe installer for me is checked on. That needs to be checked on, like I said, checked on. Then we're going to go ahead and type in our CAPTCHA. And you can pretty much uh, put whatever you want here, but uh, I'm going to go ahead and cut the blue wire. So we're going to cut the blue wire. That's going to go ahead and open an installer for you. And this should this is going to be exactly the same on the PC. So if you're a PC user, never fear. This will be exactly the same. Uh, so let's go ahead and, uh, and, and save that. I'm going to go ahead, for simplicity's sake, and save that on the desktop. And what that will do is we'll give you a... We're gonna wait for it to download here, but it will give you as I'm in Mexico, so my download speeds are crazy. For you, it would probably be uh, like three seconds. I'm also torrenting at the moment too, so shh, don't tell anybody. Don't worry, it's not illegal stuff. Or is it? Uh, so once it's finished downloading, you will you'll be left with uh, something called Letter Bomb Zip. You need to go ahead and uh, extract that. Um, and now that we can extract it, you can throw that away, and, and you'll be left with a folder called Letter Bomb. Let's go ahead and uh, move this up here. Letter Bomb, right here, yes. And uh, as you'll see, it's got a bunch of great things in here. So what we need to do is we need to take all of these goodies, and we need to copy them to the root of your SD card. And ladies and gentlemen, that's it. That's all we need to do to install the homebrew channel, at least on the computer side. So you can go ahead and eject your SD card and uh, put it in your Wii, and I will see you on the Wii. All right, guys, so here we are back on the Wii. Uh, what we're going to do is go ahead and install the homebrew channel. So what you're going to want to do is uh, you're going to want to insert the SD card that we copied all of the... Uh, the letter bomb uh, goodies too. And you're wanna, gonna, gonna wanna go to your message board. So you're gonna click on your message board and depending on where you're from, it's either gonna be today or the, or, uh, the, the, the following day, yesterday. Um, in my case, it's yesterday for some reason. But you go back, what you're looking for is what you just saw there, the little, uh, the little letter bomb thing there. That's what you're looking for, the icon. And you're gonna go ahead and click that. And what you'll see is this stuff all kind of booting up and everything, and you're just gonna give it a second. Um, now you'll see a, a, a you know a, a copyright uh, kind of thing, which basically says that uh, if you paid for the software, it was a scam. Um, you'll never have to pay for the software anywhere. So if you did pay for it, then you're not following my tutorial, <laughs> which is really disappointing. Um, anyhow, this takes a while, so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, speed this up. All right, so here we are again, um, and now that it's uh, good to go and it's had its chance to process, it's asking us to push the one button on the Wii, so go ahead and do that. And now you'll see this screen here, which is kind of the meat and potatoes of the, of, of the whole deal. This is how we install our, uh, our homebrew. Now, if you have one of the newer uh, Wiis, such as myself, um, you only have the option to install BootMe as an iOS. Um, if you have a, an older Wii, in most cases, you can install it during this process. But in this case, all we're going to do is go ahead and install the homebrew channel. So you're going to uh, make sure that you're on the continue, which you should be, highlighted by default. And go ahead and press the A button. Now we're at this screen, and what you're going to want to do is scroll up to the install homebrew channel um, and click A. Uh, go up to yes, continue. And I will see you when this is finished. 
And that's all it took. So uh, go ahead and hit continue. And now we're going to exit. And it's going to restart your Wii for you. Not really restart, just kind of reboot. And you will be taken automatically to the homebrew channel. So notice uh, we have nothing on it right now. Uh, later on, we're going to install our CIOS so that we can load a USB loader. So uh, for the next step, we're going to go ahead and install our CIOS. I'm just going to go ahead and uh, show you guys that uh, the channel is 100% on my system. Yeah, here it is. So homebrew channel works great. Everything's good. So when you click that, it opens your homebrew channel. And it should start. If I had something in the root of my SD card uh, that can be installed by can, that can be installed by the homebrew channel, you would see it here. Um, but uh, I don't. So uh, that's what we're gonna do next. So I will see you on my computer. Okay, so here we are once again on the computer. So what we're doing now is we're gonna go ahead and install, uh, or probably we're gonna load up the uh, D2X C iOS installer onto our SD card. And uh, this is gonna put a custom uh, operating system on the Wii so that we can run backups, uh, more specifically so that we can load Wii Flow or uh, USB Loader DX, uh, something like that. So first thing we're gonna wanna do is uh, put our SD card in, which I'm gonna do now. Whoops. Okay, so as you can see, the SD card is in there. Um, now, if you've uh, been following along with me, you will actually have a, uh, a folder in here uh, called, uh, well, if you've been following along with me, you'll probably have what you had before on here, which was what we used to install the homebrew channel. Um, now, what you're going to want to do is uh, you're going to want to install the D2X CIOS onto the card. So we can go ahead and get rid of this stuff. Uh, let's move that to the trash. Empty that. So now we have, once again, a blank SD card that is FAT32. Um, and you're going to want to go ahead and download the D2X C iOS installer. Um, I will have the link for that in the description, um, which will take you to the guide I mentioned earlier. And that is where we are right now. So what we're going to do is we're just going to, uh, it'll take you to this, this site here. You're going to scroll down. Ignore this offline nuss stuff because uh, if you're doing this offline, you're a noob. Just kidding. Um, you should do this on the internet, though. Uh, highly recommend it. I do not recommend you do this offline um, just because the internet stuff is going to give you the most up-to-date uh, stuff. So make sure your Wii is connected to the internet. Um, so you're just going to scroll down until you see this area here, and you're going to click on the one that says Wii Download. So click on the Download. Uh, you'll be prompted for a downloader. I've already installed it, or I've already downloaded it, so I'm not gonna um, I'm not gonna download it again. Um, and what you'll be left with is uh, this little guy right here. So you're gonna go ahead and extract that. Now you can throw this away, and you'll notice that it's got an apps folder. So it's really already set up the way we want it to be set up. All you should have in there is the D2X C iOS installer. That'll have a bunch of stuff inside of it. You can leave it in the folder, leave it in the apps folder. All you need to do is copy that to the SD card. So now it's on my SD card. All it says is apps. This is on the root directory of the SD card. And then once again, we are done with uh, the computer. Um, for the most part, we're almost completely done with the computer. Uh, Really, uh, really, where the PC comes into play is when you're adding your games, your backups, or you're 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 copying your backups um, to the hard drive. So, so this part can pretty much all be done. The the hacking part can all be done on the on the Mac, um, and and you probably can add the games on the PC as well, but or or on the Mac as well. But you know, I've had a lot of trouble with it, so I just stick with the PC. So anyway, we're done on the computer here, and we're going to go back to the Wii. This is probably the more complicated of the two, so I, I, I encourage you to pay attention and follow along on this next step. So let's go ahead and eject the card, and uh, I will see you okay, on guys, the Wii. Okay, guys, so here we are back on the Wii, and this time around we're going to go ahead and install our CIOS uh, files. So if you were following around, along with the tutorial, you've already copied everything to your SD card, and now you're uh, going to put your SD card in your Wii, so it should already be there. 
This should be bold if it's in there, or it'll say SD card menu. Um, and then you're gonna go to your homebrew channel. And then start. And what you'll find in there is the D2X CIOS installer. So we're gonna go ahead and click on that and hit load. And that'll load up, as you can see. Do, 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 do. Okay, it's loaded. So, um, next thing we're gonna do is, uh, uh, n well, now basically we're at the main configuration screen. So. There's a lot of different different configurations that you can uh, you can make when you're installing the CIOS, but uh, this one's going to show you the most recommended one. Um, and based on the uh, on on the experience of the community and other people who have done it, uh, that this should work for 99% of of you guys. And so, um, what we're going to do is install the CIOS 249 base 56 v10. Um, uh, beta 52 most likely um, so what we're gonna do is go ahead and install this now so please please don't hit a unless I tell you to hit a because you can easily brick your system if you're not following along properly so uh, well I don't know about brick but you'll have to start the, the whole the, the whole thing over again which no one wants so as you can see your cursor uh, is the the little thing that's moving there, um, and you can use the D-pad on your Wii. Oh, the other thing that I should know is that generally you want to do this with a non-Wii Motion Plus controller. However, I've been doing this entire thing with the Wii Motion Plus inside controller, and I've had no problems at all. So maybe you can do it with both, but it seemed like it was recommended to do it with only the uh, the non the the original Wii mode. Anyway, back to what we were doing. So what we're going to do is we, uh, our cursor is going to start out on the CIOS. And uh, we just need to make sure that that version is V10 Beta 5.3. So what you're going to do is just press right on the D-pad. Um, and uh, you're going to say, you're going to see where it says V10 Beta 5.2. Uh, yeah, 5.3, sorry. 5.3. Um, and that uh, will also say... D two X V ten beta five three alt, which is what you want. Um, um, so that's good for that. Then we want to go down to our C I O S base or I O S base, and we want to change that to fifty six. Um, then you want to change your slot. Well, actually, you want to keep your slot for this one. You want to keep it on two four nine. Um, and uh, also, just so you know, in some cases, uh, it may warn you um, that 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 it's going to overwrite the iOS um, in the slot that it's already there. Um, in this case, I've already modded my my Wii. Uh, I've already soft modded my Wii in in one other uh, instance, so it does. It's set, there's one already there, but yours will probably be red um, because you've got the stock iOS. Um, but that's okay. So. Um, yeah, so um, we're done for that part. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and um, sorry, I gotta do, do my uh, my notes here. Um, when you're ready to install, um, you're just gonna go ahead and hit A. So we're gonna go ahead and hit A. Um, and as you can see, two four nine is blinking. That's a good sign. Um, that's what we want. Um, And we're going to go ahead and hit A again to uh, start the installation. This takes a little while. Um, and please, please make sure you're connected to the internet because it's necessary. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, just let this go. I'm going to speed it up a little bit. And I will be right back when it's done. Okay, here we are. So um, we're back. Um, sorry, I didn't mean to click that so fast, but you can hit A. Um, if it's highlighted in green in the 249 slot, that means that uh, everything was completed successfully. Um, in 99.9% .9 of all cases, it will be green. If it's not, just do the whole process again that I just told you. 
So uh, now you can hit A, and this will take you back to where we are now, which is the new, uh, which is another, the secondary configuration um, um, screen. So what we want to do now is we want to go to, uh, um, we, we just want to select new stuff. So um, now we're going to install uh, V2 Beta 5.2. Um, but we're going to put it in a different slot. So um, go up to uh, C iOS um, and change that to 5.2, beta 5.2. Um, go to the base and change that to 5.7. And then go to your C iOS slot and change that to 2.50. Um, and then another thing we're going to change is the uh, revision. And so we're going to go over to that and we're going to change that to 6.5535. Six five five three five. There you go, right there. And you can do all that by hitting the right D-pad trigger. Um, now that we've got all that good, we're gonna go ahead and press A. And now you can see that it's blinking in red on the 250, which is good. That's what we want. And hit A again to start the install. And again, uh, this process takes a little while. Um, also need to download content off the internet, so please have it connected to the internet and have a good strong connection. And I'm gonna go ahead and fast forward this and I'll see you when it's done. All right, and here we are back on uh, the finished screen. As you can see, the 250 is highlighted. Didn't hit A preemptively this time, um, but uh, it's highlighted green, so it installed properly. So we'll go ahead and hit A to continue. And guess what, guys? That's it. That was the most complicated part of this entire tutorial. So you're going to go ahead and hit the trigger button, also known as B, and uh, that will exit out of everything. You'll see it say exiting. Um, and at this point, it should restart your Wii and put you back in the homebrew channel. So um, everything is good with that. We're going to go ahead and just uh, make sure everything is good on the system menu. Occasionally, you do have to update the disk uh, drive uh, menu and after the CIOS installation. I've already done it, so I'm not sure if it's going to ask me to do it again. Uh, it doesn't look like it. Looks like everything is good there. Um, more than likely, it's because I've already done the update. Um, but uh, if you get a disk here that says, please update disk channel, never fear. Go ahead and do it. It's not going to cause any problems. Um, if you don't do it, you won't be able to play disks on the system, which completely defeats the whole purpose of the system. And you'll need those to make backups um, when we uh, go ahead and install uh, um, the, the USB loader later on. So... Now, I will, uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and install the USB loader. I'm going to show you how to use the whole thing so that, uh, so that from start to finish, you've uh, soft modded your Wii, and now you can add backups. Um, the discla my, my disclaimer is, um, please, um, I've already done backups of these, of games that I own already. Um, I don't condone downloading them from the internet. It is absolutely positive. Uh, I, uh, it, it is positively easy to do. Um... I'm not a Boy Scout. Uh, I, I I think everyone knows that 98% of the people who are doing the soft mod are probably doing this so that they can get free games. Uh, I don't condone that behavior. This is for educational purposes only um, to show you how to do this kind of stuff. Uh, what this is really used for, guys, is, is, is to take your original games that... Uh, might be getting old or might be getting scratched by your kids or your dogs or whatever and back them up onto a hard drive um, so that you can have them for 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 uh, you know later on uh, I intend on giving this system to my uh, my my future children if I have any um, which I hope I will um, so that they can play video games and they can see what dad used to play so anyway, without further ado, we're going to take you back to the computer and show you how to uh, put everything you need for the USB loader onto your SD card. So I will see you back on the computer. Hey guys, what's up? So last part, um, well, not really the last part, but uh, last part as far as what you need to do on your, compu uh, on your uh, computer is for getting the Wii set up to play backups. So uh, on this final part, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and get uh, the uh, USB loader DX. Uh, no, sorry, GX. I don't know why it's, it says DX on the internet. It's GX. But anyway, um, so um, I will leave a, a link to the, uh, to the download uh, to SourceForge for USB loader GX. 
on the description. Um, so just go ahead and click that and it will download a file. Um, I do want to note that for this to work, um, for some reason, whoever uploaded a USB loader onto SourceForge put it in a 7-zip file. Um, so what you'll need is a, uh, uh, if you're on a Mac, um, you'll need a 7, uh, I think it's called 7Z or something like that uh, uh, alternative. Um, let me just open it up here. Uh, it's called 7ZX. Um, and I will leave also a link to that in the description. So you go ahead and download that ask, uh, that first. And then uh, click on the link to SourceForge to download the uh, USB loader. And you'll get a 7-zip file, um, which you'll then drag into your newly downloaded uh, 7ZX. You must drag it in there. It's only drag and drop. It won't recognize the file if you just double click on it. So you have to drag it into this application in order for it to do it. And it will extract wherever that file is stored. So in this case, mine was on the desktop, so extract it to the desktop. Um, this one says apps2 because at the time I had an app folder on here already, so I just renamed it app2, but it'll probably just be called apps. Um, and just as we did in the second part, we're going to go ahead and copy this to the uh, to the SD card. You must make sure that this just says apps, uh, not apps2, nothing. It needs to be renamed if it's not. Um, and if you already have an apps folder in this case, all you have to do is just double click on this one to open it. Just take this folder and drag it into your apps folder. And then what you should be left with is apps folder. You'll see in there you have your installer, which you can now get rid of because you don't need it anymore. Um, and you'll just have your USB loader GX in there. And that's it. Um, all you have to do is uh, uh, eject your SD card. Now when you put it into your Wii it, uh, and load your homebrew, you'll see that you have an app on there called USB loader GX. Um, so I'll go ahead and uh, see you guys on the Wii and show you how that all works. All right, guys, so here we are uh, on my PC. This is uh, Windows 10, but uh, you can pretty much use any Windows. Uh, um, it might be a little bit more difficult as you get the older systems, but uh, in my case, I'm just going to go ahead and show you this on Windows 10. Um, this is also pretty much the same on Windows 8 as well. Uh, first thing you need to do is get a copy of Wii Backup Manager. Uh, I'll leave the link in the description for you so you can uh, so you can download that. I'm not going to show you how to download it. I've already installed it. Everything's already set up. I'm not going to I'm not going to deal with that. So um, just go ahead and uh, and uh, um, and uh, and download that and install it. Uh, once it's installed, we're going to go ahead and open it up. I already have mine opened up here. Um, it, yours won't look like this. Actually, let me go ahead and quit this so you can see what it looks like exactly. Uh, so it's going to open like this, and uh, you're going to get a blank screen kind of like this, and you're going to be like, dude, what the heck, man? Um, nothing's showing up. How do I get this to work? So first thing you're going to want to do is uh, you're going to want to, on your C drive, you're going to want to have, I'm just going to show you here. You're going to want to have a WBFS, and this will be in the root of your C drive. WBFS. This is where all of your games uh, that you're going to transfer to your game drive on the Wii are going to be stored. Uh, they don't have to be on there all the time, just temporarily. You're just going to use it for the purpose of transporting everything. So in my case, um, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and select drive 1 as our C drive. And you'll see there that all of our games pop up. Um, so, uh, um, so as you can see, these are the games that I kind of have in this folder here. Um, and then, uh, for drive two, what you're going to want to do is click on that and then hit inactive, and then you're going to figure out what your drive is. And, you know, before we start this, I need to mention that, uh, you can do one of two things. You can either have a flash drive, um, or you can get a hard drive like myself. So I have a Western Digital My Passport Ultra. It's a one terabyte hard drive, and I formatted it in use only for my Wii, at least for now, until I decide to use it for something else or I don't play my Wii anymore. But uh, it's only used for my Wii. Um, it's not really, I mean, you can use it for other things, but it's not really recommended to put other stuff on it um, just because it could mess up the partition because um, you need a WBFS partition on that drive as well. So if you haven't done this already, let's say you have a blank drive. If you plug it in, you go to your backup manager. If you go to uh, your drive two and you select that drive, so you'll find down here in the in the uh, where all your drives are, which drive letter they are. So, you know, mine's C, D, G. 
Uh, Transporter is the other drive that I have where I keep all of my ISOs. Um, it's just, just a backup. And the Wii drive is the one that I actually plug into the Wii. Um, so you want to figure out what dr drive number it is. So if this, for for instance, was blank, I'm not going to redo it because it's a lot. It, it was a lot of goofing around for me, and I, I don't. I, and, and it takes a time to transfer the files to it and everything. So I don't want to. I don't want to mess with it. Anyhow, um, so if this were blank uh, on your computer and you plugged it in, if you s uh, select it up here um, for your drive two, drive D. Um, it wouldn't look like this. It'd be blank. And in fact, it would come up with a prompt that says this, uh, um, this drive does not contain a WBFS folder. Would you like us to create one? And uh, you will say yes, of course. And then it'll look more like this, but without the games on it. Um, so it'll be blank. And then down here, you'll see a green bar um, that's all the way up to the top. And it'll tell you how much you've used on it. It should be 99.9% .9 empty or something like that. Um, and then, uh, in which case you can start transferring files. So all you're going to do is you're going to get a hold of your ISO and you can do that one of two ways. You can either go into the game loader, uh, and you can select to, uh, to back it up through the game loader and you can research how to do that online. It's pretty simple. Um, or you can use a scrubber on uh, windows or Mac, um, in order to get the information off the, uh, off the, uh, disc, um, and what you'll be left with is normally an ISO. And what this program does is actually converts it into a WBFS file so that the Wii can read it. Um, so you'll get an ISO. You'll put it in your WBFS folder. You'll put whatever ISO you get from Scrubber or from whatever. Um, if you do it, if you do, in the case of doing it on the actual USB loader, you won't have, you can skip this step completely because it'll just already be on your drive and it'll be ready to play. Um, so I'm really just showing it to you if you're on your computer and you have an ISO file. So you, you're just going to copy that file to the WBFS, and then uh, you know drive one selected as C, which is where your WBF uh, folder is. It will automatically recognize any uh, eligible uh, games in there. Um, and then uh, drive two will be the drive that you're copying to, the one that's on your Wii. And all you're going to do is you're just going to go to back to your drive one, which is your CWBFS. I'm sorry if I'm repeating myself a lot, but it is confusing, so I want to make sure everybody gets it down really well. Um, and you just select the game that you want, check the box, and then all you're going to do is hit transfer, and then select drive two. And once you select that, you'll see a little thing that pops up in the synopsis folder. It will copy everything over. It takes about two or three minutes per game, maybe sometimes less depending on the speed of the drive. And that's it. That's all you have to do. You're you're pretty much uh, you're pretty much uh, done there. Um, now, when you eject this drive and you plug it into the Wii, you'll notice that all your games are on there. So I'm just going to go ahead and uh, uh, move on to the next part, which is to show you how uh, everything works on on the game loader. Um, and so I will see you on the Wii. All right, guys, so here we are back on the Wii. I'm going to go ahead and show you how, uh, uh, how we use the uh, USB loader. So first thing you're going to do is go to the Homebrew channel, hit Start. And when it loads up, you're going to see the USB loader GX. So all you're going to go ahead and do is plug in your hard drive that I showed you in the last step and uh, make sure that it is plugged in the outermost USB. That means if it's uh, facing you, the power button is at the top left, uh, it will be the uh, right USB port. Um, to be honest, if it doesn't work, uh, just move it to the other slot. Um, it gives you a countdown to 20 seconds, so if you've got the wrong slot, you'll know right away. Um, click on that, hit load. It'll go through its uh, little initialization, and this is where you'll actually see uh, if there's a problem with your hard drive. It'll say, cannot find hard drive, you know, blah, blah, blah. Um, in which case, you just move it to the next port, and then uh, if you've done it fast enough, it'll go ahead and load up. So this is what you see when you first get into it. Um, uh, these are all the games I showed you from the last step, uh, or that I loaded. Um, I've had loaded on my system already, but uh, the last step, this is basically what you'll get. The only difference is that uh, on yours, uh, more than likely the first time you run it, it'll look like this, and all of these cases will be blank and have question marks on them. So uh, what you're going to want to do is you're actually going to want to uh, 
keep it in this in this uh, list style first. There's probably another way to do this, but uh, this is the way I know how to do it. So you're gonna click. You're gonna find one of your games that uh, um, that that doesn't have a screen uh, that doesn't have a uh, a cover uh, art on it, and then uh, you're just gonna you're just gonna click on it. So you're gonna hit the A button, hover over it, and hit the A, bu a button. And then just make sure all these are checked and then hit OK. I'm not going to do it because the process takes a while. But essentially what happens is it'll say initializing network. Then the network will think initializer will go away. And then it'll download your files. Um, it's been touch and go for me on the, on the file thing. I've always gotten all of my covers. However, uh, occasionally it does crash the, the loader. Uh, but it's nothing to worry about. It usually just throws you back to the Wii menu. And then you reload it and you're all good. Um, but, uh, yeah, that's pretty much all there is to it. Um, if you have a disc in, in there that you want to, uh, that you want to, that you want to copy your game from, what you're going to want to do is, so, uh, what you're going to do is, uh, click on the, uh, the little, little plus here, uh, to install game. Uh, and then it's going to ask you if you want to install game. You say yes. Um, and then, uh, you got to wait for it to boot up again, obviously. And then uh, whatever is in the drive, it will uh, it'll show you. So, um, for instance, this one is James Bond. That's what I have in there. I don't actually have that in here yet. So, I'll just go ahead and click OK, and it'll uh, it'll start to load. So, uh, depending on how big the disk is, it could take a little while. Uh, in this case, it looks like it's probably going to take about 30 minutes. Uh, so yeah, that's pretty much it. I'm going to go ahead and end the video video here. Uh, thanks a lot, and uh, have a great day. Bye. All right, guys, so that's it for today. I'm not going to ramble on. I'm just going to let you know that I'm really happy to have you guys here. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, my videos just keep getting more and more views, which is super exciting. Um, if you have any comments or concerns or suggestions on how I can make my videos better, you can leave them in the comments below. Uh, if you like what we're doing, please don't forget to subscribe and also hit that like button so that I can continue to make videos like this. And don't forget to come back next Friday for another awesome video. See you later, guys.